One of the most common questions that I get asked is how I became a Microsoft MVP. And the answer is pretty simple and very common. Hard work and luck. In this lesson, I will break down how I became a Microsoft MVP and what are some of the benefits. So let's go. Now, whenever you are trying to achieve something in life, it is a good idea to observe the path that other people have taken towards the same goal. However, make no mistake, your journey will still be your own. You can do the exact same things that someone else has done towards the same path, but unless you are the same person in the exact same circumstances, your output is going to be different. I really wish this wasn't the case, but that's just the way it is. That said, there are definitely some people that I have taken inspiration from. Now, one obvious one that comes to mind when thinking about becoming a Microsoft MVP is John Skate. Now, if you don't know who he is, he used to be the number one contributor for all content on Stack Overflow. His favorite languages were C Sharp and Java. And there was a time when you could not ask a question about either of these languages with him not being the first one to answer. And in the list of things that I will mention for hard work, my contributions to Stack Overflow are definitely in there. In fact, if you look at the top contributors for TypeScript on Stack Overflow, I'm actually still up there in the all time section. And I've become good friends with some of the other people that contribute to this tag. You might know Ryan from the official Microsoft team on TypeScript. Steve Fenton is also a Microsoft MVP and I consider him a mentor of mine. There is no way that I would have contributed this much to Stack Overflow if it was not for him. In the beginning, when I would leave answers, he would actually provide encouraging comments which prompted me to feel happy about my work and improve my answers. This brings me to the second main area where I've put a lot of my effort. Stack Overflow for me is a very social activity. And another highly social activity is working in open source. I set myself on building a collection of community owned tools that work in conjunction with what Microsoft was doing with TypeScript. Now this is way back when Grunt was still a thing. You know the build system? So what did I do? I built Grunt TS. And yeah, Grunt is no longer a thing that anyone I know uses. So it hasn't been published for three years, but there are still some build systems that are using it and it actually gets 40,000 downloads per week, which is crazy. So yeah, Grunt was great. It ran in my terminal and I was compiling my TypeScript and I could use whatever I wanted to use. And the ID that was popular at that time was Atom. You know, that thing from GitHub. And this was before even VS Code was a thing. So Atom TypeScript was essentially taking Atom and turning it to something what VS Code is today. And I'm pretty sure people are still using it because it does have almost 2 million downloads. And a very fond memory of mine from this time is that Enders actually demoed Atom TypeScript on screen during his build 2015 presentation. And then my open source friends and I moved these and a number of other critical pieces of TypeScript open source ecosystem like TS Node, TS Loader, TypeTalk into a GitHub organization called TypeStrong. This allowed us to build a community of people that care about TypeScript and could fix different pieces of infrastructure that we used at work. In addition to this, I've done a lot of other open source work as well, way too much for me to keep on going on about over here. But this brings us to a nice segue into the next thing that I want to mention which is TypeScript Deep Dive. This is probably what people in the extended TypeScript ecosystem know me by. What would happen is that people would ask me questions and not have them on Stack Overflow and I would answer them, but then go ahead and write my thoughts down and send them that reference so that they have something to look at after we've had our conversation. Over time, it just turned into this book. And I say that in air quotes because I do have an actual published book called Beginning Node.js with APRES. By the way, the publisher APRES was linked to me by Steve Fenton, which I actually mentioned previously, got linked up with him from Stack Overflow. So thank you, Steve. One more thing that can help is speaking at lots of conferences and meetups. I've done a lot of those that I don't want to list right now. I'm actually speaking at a conference in about a month's time called Testing Talks, in which I will be talking about Cyprus, which brings me to the next thing that I want to mention which is the benefits of becoming a Microsoft MVP. I'm actually an ambassador for the Cypress end-to-end -end testing framework. And the reason why I got into this program is because of my contributions to Cypress in various articles, as well as lessons here on YouTube. But in addition to my contributions, I think a key factor is becoming a Microsoft MVP. Once you get accepted as a valuable professional, it's actually easier to get into additional developer programs. Now, Cypress is perhaps something that I've had to get into on my own, but there are lots of benefits provided by Microsoft for its MVPs. The obvious ones are free licenses to Microsoft products like Windows, Office, Visual Studio Premium, but there's an extended Microsoft family as well that you get free access to. For example, LinkedIn Premium and GitHub Premium. For me personally, the biggest ones in this list is perhaps GitHub Premium as well as Azure Credits. 
In addition to Microsoft, there are third party providers that want to help Microsoft MVPs as well. And one thing that I want to mention here is the TechSmith affiliate program, which I am a member of. And this gives me free access to Snagit as well as Camtasia, which is a product that I use all the time and I could not rate it highly enough. Another third party provider that I want to mention is JetBrains. You get free access to their IDEs if you are a Microsoft MVP. And I use WebStorm as well as IntelliJ IDEA when I want to debug something really, really complicated. Of course, there are lots of other benefits of becoming a Microsoft MVP as well, some of which have probably influenced me. But the objective here was not to convince you that becoming a Microsoft MVP is the best thing in the world. It's just that it is something that I value in my life. In the end, I want to mention that you don't have to do all of the things that I have done. You could probably focus on one of these areas and do a great job at it and be successful. For me personally, it wasn't about becoming a Microsoft MVP. It was more about being a part of a community and having great social interactions and enjoying life. And that's all for this one. If you enjoyed this lesson, smash that like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.